Good morning, comic book community. To God be the glory for all the things that he's done. And we yet thank the Lord for him today. We thank the Lord for the Lord for just who he is. Thank the Lord for all of you, comic book community. And welcome to KJ's Porch Puppy Comics. Where again, y'all know if you can't run with the big dogs, stay on the porch. As I told you so many times, it's nice on the porch. Welcome to episode 69 of the channel. And we yet thank the Lord. As I said, we're not going into a whole lot of other names. I've been said this once before, but I'm just making it plain again. You know, we had the uh, Long Haul Mondays and then we had the New To Me comic book Wednesdays. I did like the New To Me. We might do that again down the road, have Lord bless see fit depending on how the books come in. But we yet go on with the pickle barrel because as I said, the majority, I would say probably right at 80% of the books that I've yet been showing will be in the pickle barrel. So I have done a little trading, done a little trading with another friend of mine, my brother Paul at the, the consumer mall there in Owensboro, done a little trading with him. I tell you, I thank the Lord for putting people in my path that still believe in doing some trading. Uh, like I said, we got Brother Rob at the uh, Book and Music Exchange in Owensboro. We got Brother Paul in Owensboro, Consumer Mall. We got uh, RB, Ryan Brown uh, from Hendo. We got Knights Comics and Games from Hendo. Uh, we got Matt Halls from, um, oh my goodness, Comics Unlimited. Uh, up there at the Cowboy Gyms Consumer Mall. We got my brother, my brother again, brother T. Ravis, yet trading with him. And, you know, I said, I just thank the Lord for the opportunity to be able to do trading with these brethren. And I thank the Lord for them. So I know you came to see the books. So we're going to go ahead. Hopefully I got a decent little stack and I'm not going to hit you with everything on this particular episode. So it'll be broke up, you know, but uh, still asking you to like, share, subscribe, ring that notification bell, give some thumbs up, you know, get, send me some comments and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. So again, we're moving on today, comic book community, guys and girls. This is the all new Wheelie and the Chopper Bunch. This is a cartoon that came out around about the time I was younger. Um, if y'all are not familiar with Wheelie and the Chopper Bunch, Wheelie done a little bit of a, he had more of a horn. He, he talked with his horn more so than anything else as opposed to Speed Buggy, which he had that chicka pa chicka pa chicka pa chicka pa chicka pa chicka pa You know, he had that kind of thing going on. But this was a, car, a Charlton 25 cent comic. This is issue number two, uh, came out in 75. As you can see, as it is with some Charlton, I ain't gonna say most Charlton, I'm gonna say some Charlton books. Uh, you know, they said the paper was made cheaply and different things, so to find them in this particular kind of condition, especially the kitty ones, you know, the little kid books, because you know what a kid book gonna do, he gonna read it. So as you can see, the lines is on the book. Uh, there's spine ticks on the book. But uh, I mean, it's Wheelie and the Chopper Bunch. It's number two, come on. Now here is Wheelie and the Chopper Bunch number six. And they went up to 30 cents on this one. And, uh, you know, I said it's, it's uh, as I told you about when Willie talked with us, he's at Honk right here, oh, up there in the little box where they put the little characters at. And uh, <laughs> don't ask me why I picked these up, y'all, because I really don't know. I think I just liked them because they was a Charlton and then it was Wheelie and the Chopper Bunch. Come on, like I said, I'm collecting and picking up stuff more so for nostalgia and just for the fun of collecting. These next books... As y'all know, I like some Western. I like some Army books and along with the 
the capes as my uh my brother mikey call them you know i also like the little pope characters the shadow the um uh doc savage different things like that you got your buck rogers and different things like that you know flash gordons but uh on these army books these are this is the 100th issue of gi combat featuring the haunted tank but the thing that attracted me to these particular books as i'll show you when i get ready to put it up here is the cover the covers are painted these are some of the beautiful most artistic looking covers now don't get me wrong i've seen others you know and we got all the new books that we're looking at and the new artists but to have this type of stuff came out back in the day comic book community i mean would you look at that that is fantastic and again as your boy told you beforehand I like collecting, if I can, the 50th issue, the 100th issue, if they go that far, maybe 150, so on and so forth. But when I ran across this one, I was going to pick it up more so just because of the cover. But the 100th issue is a bonus. And I mean, it's, it's just detailed. It's detailed. And I like it. I like this. And I like some GI combats, especially when they had some of the GI combats where they was in, got lost in some kind of monster island or prehistoric island. I've always liked it when they had the, uh, the, uh, the armed forces going up against the dinosaurs. That's a good time to be had by all. This is another one. This is, I saw 100 and then right behind it was 101. And again, another painted cover. Would you look at this? These these books are fantastic. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, your tastes change over the time. So you're going to end up picking up different stuff. And I'm glad, the Lord bless, I was able to see these and would pick these up as well. I had, didn't get a chance to get a bunch of stuff because I had left a bunch of stuff. You know, like I said, I do trading. So I had left a bunch of stuff I wasn't able to get. But I kept looking at these. And I've been wanting these. I want to get to his first issue special with his first appearance. And then I'll try to find me another number one. As you can see, it's a black cover, but it's got it's got some creases and the different things. But it's it's from the 70s. And it's another one of my favorite characters by the artist and writer Mike Grell. Uh, the warlord and uh, I always like this character I don't have to keep telling y'all you know every time I'm doing a video y'all got some kind of a noise going on in the background something's going on but that's the way it is when you're filming in your house something is going on if you don't have if you don't have children or grandchildren or you know you got a dryer going a washer going your oven may go ding you know all that type of stuff but anyway we got uh, Warlord number two. That's still a nice book. I was glad to pick these up. I've been wanting these first three. Uh, actually, I'm going to try to get the, the probably maybe the first 12, maybe the first 20, because they, they all had good stories. They all had great artists. Mike Grill, come on. This is number three. I always liked it because it was it was again this was a, he was an Air Force pilot crashed in this uh if you allow me to call it this DC's version of the Savage Land and uh they got a name for it but I can't remember what the name of it is right now so y'all forgive me if you know you can hit me up but uh the thing I liked about it again was okay it's this land it's all kind of strange okay you got lizard men right here but uh, I think it's dinosaurs and dragons and different things like that. But the thing that made me come even more so into this character is because when he started to venture out, if you go back and get that uh, first issue special where he crash land that uh, experimental jet that he was flying, he went up there and looked behind his seat and this man pulled out this Desert Eagle. Now, how many clips he had with this Desert Eagle, I don't know, but he... Not only, you know, he, he with the uniform he's got on now, if you allow me to say, or the suit that they ended up getting put on there, he would soon have that and his sword. You know, I guess, you know, being military, he's hand-to-hand -hand combatant, you know, but he got the sword, but he had that Desert Eagle as a backup. 
and I thought that was cool. These next books here are from 87, and uh, sometimes it's hard to find them in, in, in pretty good shape, but I was glad to find these. Mephisto versus the Fantastic Four, number one, and then this is 87, so, you know, it, it's newsstand, but anyway, uh, number two versus the X Factor. I can't remember what this story was about. It's been so long, but when you find a full set and they look this nice, you know, number three versus the X-Men, you know, you have to go ahead and pick them up, you know, issue number four. Now, this was 87, so these were supposed to be the bigger books of the miniseries. <coughs> Excuse me. So, with this being a thing, I guess you would say, or an event, this book here was $1.50. You know, I can't remember if the books back in 87 was running at $1.50 or $1.75. Or I can't remember. But anyway, next book we have. I was really glad to pick this one up. Moon Knight from the 1980 run. And this is number 35. It's featuring the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. And uh, it's great. It's, it's this, this run of Moon Knight. You know, I used to look over these books. I'd had a, I guess maybe had the first 10, 20 issues. Might have had more than that back in the day. But it, depending on what iteration of the collection I had. But uh, I went on and picked it up because I liked the way it's set up. Uh, the art, I thought, was still Sienkiewicz, but I forgot what the name's Parks, I think the guy's name is. Uh, I think it's what his name is that's doing the art. Don't hold me to it, comic book community. You know, I don't write everything down, and I try to go off the top of my head on stuff that I knew back from the day. But uh, those, even those books here, you know, these here, the Mephisto versus the Avengers and all of them, you know, these books, I told you, I think in the last episode, these books here were done by John DeSchema and Al Milgram done the art on them. I mean, the uh, writing on them. So, you know, the Johns was into it. They were doing their own thing. All right. Next books we're going to hit you with. And I was glad to pick these up. I, I, I like older Batman. I, now, some of the new stuff is all right, but I like the older Batman because it's, I'm an old comic collector. That's that's just what I like. Old 40 cent price point going against Captain Boomerang, you know, and uh, you can see the condition of the book. It's nice. It's set up. It's a newsstand. And uh, I just thought it was a smooth book. It was a smooth one. Next one we got is, uh, excuse me, that's issue 322 of Batman. This is Detective Comics, issue 531 of Batman. And this one, can you believe it that after all this time, I thought I would get this back in my collection. And I just, I don't know, I guess I just kept slipping my mind. I kept looking at everything else. But uh, A Nightfall, Batman 497, art by Kelly Jones, The Breaking of the Batman. I always kept that one in my collection and never did. Every time I see one, sometimes it don't have the little cardboard piece over it. You know, but uh, this one here, as you can tell, even with the cardboard piece, there's no spine ticks. The book is in beautiful shape. It's in beautiful shape. I was really glad to get this one. I think I've had this one twice. And let me tell you, there's art chores by uh, Dick Girano, uh Joe Kubert. Look like Jim Apero. Ah, uh, who else we got? Oh my goodness. Uh, Walt Simonson, a brother by the name of Yates and stuff. And it's uh, the 500th issue of Detective Comics. I've had used to try to keep that in my collection because again, it's the 500th issue. And uh, you can see everybody on there. It says special stories. Look at all them. Walter Gibson, creator of The Shadow, Jim Apero, uh, Mike Barr, you know, Corey Bates, Alan Burnett, you know, all of them. Carmine Infantino. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Bob Smith, Lee Wings, Tom Yates. 
See, and the 500th issue, I think this will probably be the second, I'm thinking, or maybe the third time that I've had this in a collection. So, like I said, everything that I'm showing, 80% of these books will still yet be in the pickle barrel, you know. Our scripture reading this morning, y'all didn't think y'all was going to get Bible with that, did you? One verse. It's coming from Proverbs. Y'all familiar with Proverbs? I tell everybody, if you want to start reading your Bible, start in Psalms and Proverbs. Lord bless. It's really good. Uh, the 14th chapter of Proverbs and the 34th verse reads, Righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. You know, even in the word, it's so simplified. We are the one that make it hard. But said righteousness exalted a nation. A nation That means I'm looking at it even in our nation, comic book community. If there was more righteous going on than more underhanded, backstabbing, backbiting, do what you want to do, say what you want to say, take away from the strength of God. Well, what God, everything that God says is wrong in his word, thou shalt not do, you know, that man is saying, hey, we're just going to go ahead and do it. But the scripture right here tells you in no uncertain terms, righteousness, that's God's righteousness, because our righteousness is as filthy rags. That's scripture, y'all. It says righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Ah, uh, think on your way, comic book community. Brave and the Bold, number 122. Batman and Swamp Thing. I want you to look at the colors popping on that book. Ping, ping, ping. The colors are popping on that book. I like it. Brave and the Bold, me and Brother Mikey. You know, I liked Brave and the Bold a whole lot better than I did with the, uh, what was it? Uh, DC Presents with the Superman. There was a few stories and few characters I liked him teaming up with. You know, but the Batman, Brave and the Bold, you know, uh, I mean, it's nice stuff. I mean, he, you know, the people he teamed up with, you know, down through the years. Now, again, this is not like it was with the man thing. You know, it seemed like every time I was throwing up some kind of book, there was at least one or two that had the man thing in them. And, uh, you know, uh, every every stack almost. I like the man thing character. I like the swamp thing character. But it's from the 70s that I like the Swamp Thing. I have nothing against Alan Moore and his writing, you know, and different things like that, but it was the artwork that drawed me in. So anyway, that was Brave and the Bold number 22. This is Brave and the Bold number 176. And this is done by Kaluta from The Shadow Fame. I mean, that's a nice cover. It's a great cover. And I like that book a whole lot, a whole lot. Now, I've only got a few more books to show you in this set. So I'm going to show you the last three. I was really happy to get this. It's, it's the uh, movie, official movie adaptation. But Dave Stevens done the cover, 1991. And Dave Stevens done the cover. He's another great artist I like, you know. And uh, I think that's what everybody's been looking at, the, looking for these Dave Stevens covers, covers where he done the, the uh, if you allow me to say, the good girl art, so to speak. And they're looking for those covers. I think one with Rainbow on it. There's a couple of books in the Crossfire run uh, that he did. One with Crossfire with... Uh, I believe it's Elvis in the background. And then there's another one where it's got crossfire and it's got a picture of Marilyn Monroe. Uh, I just looked up those because me and brother Rob was looking up, trying to see, you know, how many times back in the day, I say within the last maybe 10 years that you might've saw them books in the dollar bin and just looked over them because guess what? That's what you wasn't into that at the time. You wasn't really picking it up because of that particular artist. And if you had a chance to pick up a Captain America that you wanted or an Incredible Hulk or Batman or Superman, so on and so forth, you would pass those books over. But anyway, the interior art is not bad for this particular book, but I got it more so before the cover because it is the Rocketeer. I do like that character because it's another pulp character, you know, another hero, you know, and different things. And it's nothing, nothing, you know, he has no superpowers, just a jetpack. 
and uh forgot what that gun looks like look like some kind of a luger but i could be wrong but anyway dave stevens done the cover last two books comic book community and i'm gonna be out of your way been looking for this one for a long time as well let me move some of this down we don't want to we don't want a man down situation take a look at that batman again here we go Captain America and the Falcon 150. Ma, 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 ma. I've been looking for this book because I had these back in the day. Uh, I think I had a nice Captain America run from uh, issue 100 up, you know, and was proud of that run. Like I said, you know, if I'd have knew then what I knew now, I'd have just sit tight on them. This is the reason why everybody's telling me if you get stuff that you like, sit on it. You know, because that's what makes collecting fun. I'm not collecting to flip, uh, you know, different things like that. Now, I'm not saying anything about anybody that does. That's what that's what you do. But I'm just saying with me, you know, I collect because of the fun of it. You know, because if something happens to me and the Lord decides to call me home, then, uh, you know, I done already told my wife what to do with the comics. And she already knows, you know, so... I just thank the Lord for the opportunity to yet being able to pick them up. That's my getaway. That's my little bit of a, what I do. It's a release. It's just something to do. You know, sometimes I'm able to run with my brother Mikey, you know, but sometimes he can't go due to the amino therapy that he takes for the cancer that, you know, the Lord has blessed him to get as far as he has. And, you know, to where we thought we was going to lose him at one time, you know, the Lord had blessed him and he's, he's doing well. He's doing well. And thank the Lord for him, you know, and I, like I said, we just thank the Lord. And we do a lot of praying for those that have cancer and different things and other ailments that may be going on. It's so much for us to be praying for. You think we wouldn't have time to be petty over stuff, but that's that's something else. Let me get back to the last book, you all. All right. This is for my boy, Troy. If you're watching this one, T. Ravis. I don't think I'm getting rid of it just yet, bro. But uh, if I do, you got first shot at it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I give you not brand it, number 12. I saw this, you know, back in the day, you just wanted to have a 12 cent comic book. You know, it didn't make no difference. You know, it, how obscure it was, weird, what have you. You just wanted one. And when I saw this one, only one in this box, and it was issue 12, and it's a square bound. You can see a little spine ticks right in here. But, I mean, usually, I want you to look at that. Look at that spine. Huh? Not brand it. I'm going to get another look at Frank. And then they got four bush man. That's the guy with the pot on his head. Say, so why is everybody running? And Dr. Doom says, he's got bad breath. Check out Submariner, you. I mean, Civil Surfer, y'all. Cap, Spider-Man, Hulk, Thor, Thing, Iron Man. Oh, yeah. And Daredevil down there in the corner doing that little Superman run. There's Subby over there. Yeah, y'all. Uh, the book is nice. I mean, it's got a wee bit of a crease here. Little color fade right here on Surfer. But, I mean, the book is it's nice. I mean, that's this is porch puppy collecting right here. Like I said, little blemishes and spine ticks and different things. I can deal with it for a book like this, you know. Long as I, I got both covers and the book is, uh, you know, connected real well, then it's something that I don't mind messing with. It, it's, it's just one of them books, you know, and I just really, truly enjoy it. Oh, I said that was the last book, but I, I got to let y'all see this one. You know, back in the day, I told y'all there was an amazing Spider-Man number 16, which is the first appearance of Monica Rambeau as Captain Marvel. 
and I had bought one offline from a guy. I think I forgot it. The book was, it, 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 the cover is all just, you know, but I was glad to get it for what I paid for it. And uh, it was a little, still a little pricey because that was the first appearance of Monica Rambeau. But uh, I mean, it wasn't too out of out of the vein where Porch Puppy couldn't deal with it. But as I was looking through Brother Paul's boxes and, uh, you know, looking through some of the Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, I want y'all to see what I ended up picking up. Would you look at that? Amazing Spider-Man, King Size Annual, number 16. Look at that book. One day when I get my other one out, I'm going to put them side by side because even though I've got this one and it is an upgrade because we can see it just a wee bit of a spine tick on the cover right in here. Little color break right up here along the top. But this book is beautiful. That book is, I mean, and the inside art is great. And just because I got this one, you know, I was using that other one as a placeholder for maybe I, I might get rid of it eventually, but I don't think I will. You know, um, you know, they always used to say comic book community, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but sometimes you got to learn, you know, I mean, books for us old collectors. And when I mean old, I don't mean so much as, uh, you know, oh, I'm decrepit. I'm a old whippersnapper. No, nothing like that. It's just, you know, the books and the way things are set up now, it's a, oh, it's a whole new game. I'm reminded we used to go all over the United States doing computers and fiber optics. And the Lord blessed us. And I've got to see a whole lot of the country, got to make a, a, meet a whole lot of good people I also ran into some folks that were still practicing prejudice and uh in this day and time. And uh I'm telling you, it was it was an experience. But anytime the Lord blessed me and I had a chance to talk, I always had a chance to tell them about Jesus Christ. And I enjoyed that. But as I'm noticing, my boss used to say all the time that you're not gonna be able to be climbing around in ceilings and and, and, you know, doing computers. And, and when, like I said, we did, we did the whole shebang. We put in the cat five, we done the, the, uh, fiber optic cable. We learned how to, uh, terminate and score the cables and, and run it through. And that was an experience. And I yet thank the Lord for it, but he used to tell us all the time. He says, y'all not going to be able to do that. You know, climbing up and down them ladders, always up in the concrete, you know, doing a whole lot of aerial work and climbing under buildings and all this. He said, it's a young man's game. Well, even with the comic books now, I'm seeing that, you know, it's a young man's game, you know, and uh, not saying that we old guys don't get into it, but um, there's just a lot of things that we just have to really look at now, you know, and uh, I'm the type of person where I want to I guess you say I want a I want a cherry pick collection. I want a collection that I I this is what I collect. You know, uh I've got almost a full set with one issue, and I think Brother Rob has it for me, of Atari Force. Why in the world would I collect Atari Force? You know, I didn't like Atari Force when it came out, but I read an issue or two, and guess what? I liked it. So I put the set together. You know. I always like stuff like Captain Carrot, um, certain hooks, uh, Wolverines. I, I, I don't even think, I was thinking the other day, I don't even think I have any Wolverines in my collection. Uh, most of the books, I guess, I want to keep around if I, if I got any 60s, uh, you know, the Silver Age, the Bronze and the Copper. I don't think I want to go too far ahead into the modern, you know, uh, there may be certain books. Like I said, I may try to get some for a cover buy or a cover trade or something like that. You know, um, there's a book coming out. I don't know if it's this month or next month where it's Godzilla and Kong. I think it is versus the uh, Justice League. That's a party all day, man. That is a party all day. Uh, I, I got the Godzilla versus the, uh, Power Rangers 
Now I come up with the Power Rangers with my son and my grandchildren. So I know quite a bit about the Power Rangers, you know, um, but you know, when you got Godzilla in there, well, you know, you got me on board anyway, but I mean, there's just certain books that I like. And like I said, doing again with this Spider-Man and there's other books that I'm just looking at to pick up and put in my collection. Uh, I'm doing something now. Uh, give me, let me see about another minute here. I'm doing something now, which is what a friend of mine or one of my cousins, what he calls when he does his computer, he calls doing a scorched earth. Some of you out there might understand what that is, but, uh, when he go through and basically just, uh, you know, just delete or get rid of stuff that's on his computer, starting fresh with a fresh palette. Well, every year, at least maybe twice or three times a year, if it seems like my collection is getting too full for me and uh, I have to do a scorched earth. So that's why I was telling Brother Paul I was doing a scorched earth, uh, pulling out stuff, you know, do I really want to keep it? Is it something that I really want to have? You know, um, I don't have a lot of what you call big dollar books and that's all well and good as well. But, you know, but the books that I like, you know, I said, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's just what I like. So, you know, if my collection get down to say eight to 10 short boxes, I'm good with that, you know, because I said, if it starts getting in, because it's like uh, like we used to do back in the day when we worked at the grocery store, you all, and we had to stock those shelves. And they used to tell us, LIFO, FIFO. It says, uh, uh, the LIFO was uh, last in, first out, and then first in, last out. So it's the same thing with the new com with the comic books, whether it's new or old. If I feel like I don't want to deal with it anymore, just like I was telling you about those certain issues and stuff, even with the Atari force, you know, I might end up trading it off one day, you know, but, uh, anyway, as T Ravis always says, his tagline is collect what you like. And I'm enjoying collecting what I like and showing it to you all. So again, like, share, and subscribe, ring that notification bell. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know what you're thinking. You know what they say, you know, these are the things with the algorithm I think I'm up to maybe on this new channel, maybe I think it's 20 subscribers. I still have the other 65 over on the other channel, which I can't retrieve. But, <laughs> ah, but eventually, I guess. But as long as Lord bless me and I keep trading, uh, ending up with some books, because right now, you all, money is supremely tight. And, uh, even though, you know, people are living from paycheck to paycheck, I don't care how much money you're making, you know, you are still yet living from paycheck to paycheck. And that's living within your means. But through the grace of God, understand this, you all, and I'm going to leave y'all with this. We know that only Jesus Christ can fill that void that's in your heart, your mind, your soul. And know this. That as long as the Lord bless you and you can rise in the morning, understand it wasn't your clock, it wasn't your wife, it wasn't your husband, it wasn't your children, it wasn't whatever that woke you up. It was Jesus Christ that woke you up. And understand that when you stop and take a look at things, don't get so bent out of shape. As long as you got clothes on your back, food in your, on your, in your stomach, a vehicle to drive, a roof over your head, you know, you are truly, truly blessed. And when we start looking at things like that, it makes it somewhat easier to look at even with all the chaos that's going on in the world. It makes it easier to know that you got somebody on your side because he said, cast all your cares upon him for he careth for you. I love your comic book community. Ah, uh, maybe next Saturday you might have another video coming out. It all depends on how the Lord is yet blessing. And if so, You'll hear me again, but I love you with the love of the Lord. And remember, it's nice on the porch. God bless you. Have a beautiful, blessed day.